Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, March 19th, noontime in the mountains, 2020. The models are in, and Winter Storm Pearl is going to make its way across the country over the next 48 hours, bringing hours of powers to the country. And as this major storm moves east, snow, flash flooding, tornadoes, and damaging winds will be possible. This was the scene outside just an hour ago. <laughs> it's spring, March 19th. And the Sierra cement is shedding. Keep calm, it's boom time. Blizzard warnings issued for the first day of spring in three states and 35 counties, almost doubling the warnings yesterday. From intense storms to heavy rain and some snow, the first day of spring will bring massive storm that is felt from coast to coast happening now. One of the first significant storm systems of the season, a real clash of warm and cold air masses. It's not uncommon for early spring storms like this to bring a large swath of snow. Do you see that? Ten years ago, they said there would never be snow, but now it is not uncommon for spring storms to bring large swaths of snow. And that's a ho, ho, ho. Spring brings a big blast of winter. The start of spring brings snow to Minnesota. Say it ain't soda. Thursday storm, as of Thursday morning, a strong storm will pass south of the state. It's already bringing snow to northern Minnesota and areas of rain and drizzle to southern Minnesota. And we're going to check the models in just a second. Minnehaha in South Dakota under a winter weather advisory, according to the National Weather Service. I love that. I love the Minnehaha. If you're in Sioux City, heads up. It's going to be a wet one and chilly. Oh, my God. This is a wet, heavy. Here's the live Doppler this morning in Kiloland. You can see Sioux City getting hit earlier this morning. Overnight storm spawns tornadoes and leave damage in Wise County, Texas. Now, unfortunately, fortunately, there was no loss of life here, just a little damage. Storm spotters reported a suspect tornado that tore through a rural area south of Graham, 80 miles northwest of Fort Worth. And those uh, warnings are going to continue today in the southeast as this storm wreaks havoc across the country. Look at the warnings and watches across the U.S. A significant storm system impacting the central U.S. currently. It will bring a plethora of weather impacts to the central U.S. into Friday. Heavy snow, strong winds causing blizzard conditions and hazardous travel from the Rockies to portions of the northern plains. Heavy rainfall, severe thunderstorms will be common from the southern plains to the Mississippi Valley and Midwest. Some of the storms could contain damaging winds, tornadoes, and hail. Over 10,000 hail reports alone yesterday in the U.S., an inch and a half or smaller. So if you're in the southeast, this band's going to be moving east. Flash flood warnings and watches, as well as um, severe thunderstorms. We have winter storms and watches through eight states, all the way from New Mexico, all the way up to northern Minnesota. Blizzard watches and warnings in 36 counties in Wyoming, Nebraska, um, Iowa and Kansas. I'm sorry, Colorado and Kansas. And this is ongoing. The snowfall analysis from the last 24 hours shows the south, the southern mountains here in the Rockies picking up two to three feet in some areas, the big winter, and then some heavy snow up through North Dakota through a large swath into Minnesota. That's going to continue today, and we'll check the models quickly here. We'll just bring you through the next few days. Here's the rest of Thursday. Heavy snow to continue and to move into Nebraska there. You see that heavy blizzard patch here. So talking a foot of snow in this triple junction of Colorado, Wyoming, and Nebraska, which is the heart of the blizzard warnings. That will continue through midday Friday bringing more snow in a second wave through Nebraska, Iowa, and up through Wisconsin here. There's your Saturday, a little bit more snow in the Rocky Mountains here, and then just a light system moving through Monday. Tuesday, some snow into the Northeast. Wednesday, a Canadian front bringing more snow into the West, including the Sierras all the way down to the South and up into the Cascades. So as all the ski resorts are closed west of the Divide, it may be east. I don't know anything about these resorts. Heavy snow will continue to fall. 9.5 feet in the Sierras over the last four days in some areas. Now, let's talk about 
hurricane season. It is spring, and El Nino may skip us, which could mean greater storm activity for Florida. There have been a few large storms that hit Florida, and this year you're in the crosshairs, Florida. So if you are missing out on infrastructure failure um, and power outages, it's coming. It's coming hard. All-time record snowfall buries parts of Greta Thunberg's boyhood home. The first flakes of snow in Karuna, Sweden, fell back in September. And from there, they have continued relentlessly with accumulations of snow comfortably surpassing the region's all-time snowfall record in Sweden. They still have a month of snow to go, and they've already beat the annual record, 10.7 feet. And I think uh, Greta's living up here in this small apartment on the second floor. Those are the facts. Seismic update. We have some rumblers on the ring of fire. We had that major activity in Utah, which is the largest quake near Salt Lake City ever recorded. Now, it's, it's not that rare. About every two years, there's a moderate quake, four magnitude or greater in that region. But at 5.7, it's one of the largest quakes in Salt Lake City ever recorded. There have been larger magnitude quakes 12 years ago. Just, just west of there in Wyoming was a 6.2 magnitude and some other larger quakes, but none at directly in Salt Lake City. The average quake in Salt Lake every two years in the moderate range is 4 to 4.5. It's been happening every two years until this 5.7 rumbler, which was followed by a 5.2 Petrolia in California. And that's part of the Cascadia rupture zone and the biggest quake of note in the last 24 hours, 6.2 in Indonesia, no tsunami. No other quakes of note. The Hawaiian Islands are getting a little bit more seismically active, so we could be seeing some volcanic activity there shortly. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Kluchiskov with two puffers in the last 24 hours to 20,000 plus, but no other volcanoes of note. Now, the Grace Gravity Mission is capturing Greenland's ice loss, and the mainstream is picking up on it. Tons of salacious articles in the last 48 hours coming out about Greenland shedding an extraordinary 600 billion tons of ice. By uh, last year, record amounts shed. Now, this is part of the disingenuous nature of the mainstream. Most people will just read those headlines and be like, uh, we're all burning up. But the fact is, right here, third sentence. Of course, when winter sets in, some of that mass would be recovered. Some of it? Well, let's see how much of it is recovered. Let's learn some science. Surface mass loss occurs for three and a half months in Greenland every year, and the gain happens for eight and a half months, for a total of 12 months. During the eight months of gain, more snow and ice is gained than is lost in any year. And the reason they don't tell you that is because that would mean that there is no ice loss in Greenland, which there isn't. There is mass gain for 210 days which is usually around 700 gigatons, and then a mass loss last year at 660 gigatons, which would be a net gain of 40 gigatons for the year, which is why if you drop something on the ice sheet on Greenland, in 50 years, it will be 100 feet under the ice. It has nothing to do with man, nothing to do with global warming, and everything to do with natural climate variability and the ebbing and waning of glaciers. You like that? Yeah, that's a boom. Look at that. That's the oldest known chicken. But before we get there, let's talk about the stratosphere, where birds and planes fly, where the polar vortex spins, where bacteria and viruses thrive. Oh, yeah, and there's very few clouds up there. So if there's any stratospheric aerosol injection, there would be no chemtrails. There's your quick look. <laughs> Quick lesson for the day. Now, the wonder chicken walked the earth with the dinosaurs. An early ancestor to ducks and chickens waddled along the shores of modern-day Europe just before the asteroid impact that caused the global extinction event 65 million years ago. And there's the first chicken. Ancient secrets of lightning strikes at stone circles revealed. Now, this is very interesting because it answers many questions. New evidence of massive lightning strikes at the center of a stone circle in the outer Hebrides may help shed light on what these monuments were created for thousands of years ago. Now, geophysicists have revealed 
that not only was the stone originally part of a circle of standing stones, probably astronomical in nature, but also that there was a massive star-shaped magnetic anomaly in the center, either the result of a single large cosmic lightning bolt or many smaller strikes on the same spot. Now, why was ancient man using these powerful magnetic anomalies to their advantage? That is the question we need to answer for all of humanity. And I'm sure you've seen scenes like this. There's no bread. People are like, what's going on? Well, here's a quick tip. You can make your own bread. You just need bread flour, salt, and water, and a little instant yeast. You can make sliced bread, artisan bread, and you can do it in under 24 hours. And the total time of work it takes is less than 20 minutes. Miracle No Need Bread has been around for decades. And if you don't know about it, re watch some of these articles. With less than 10 minutes of work, you can make your own loaf of bread if you have instant yeast, salt, and a little bit of flour. You can't even screw it up. It helps to have a Dutch oven, but there are many different techniques you can look up online, especially YouTube, while the internet is still functioning. And I think it's important that if you don't know how to make anything, you know how to make bread. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Supplies are in short number. But it's time to learn how to be more self-resilient, self-reliant. Learn a skill. We have tons of time to shelter in place. Keep calm and learn something. Thanks to all of our one-time donors, all of our Patreons. We love each and every one of you. Please share this video. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. Be safe.